gracious good day to one and all once again, tis I, Norton the first by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode number 94 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is July 13, 2020. It is our 118th day under COVID-19 restrictions. Let's begin with a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, as you know, if you're a regular viewer of this vlog, uh, we do the regular program five days a week, and then the Saturday program is always a little special with our guest star, the Countess Lola Montez of Lansfeld. Well, we've decided to change up the schedule a little bit uh, because Mondays is what we usually do, as we are doing today, catch-up day. But it's also the day when we uh, tend to the affairs of state, restock the imperial larder, etc. So it's getting to be a bit much to do uh, three days and all that on one day because I have to cover Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. No, wait, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. That's three days, yes, that's that's right. And uh, it's a long show, as many of you know. And today is certainly will be, excuse me. So what we've decided to do is forego the Monday show. We're going to a five day a week schedule, which I think is reasonable. And we'll be doing the program Tuesday through Friday, the regular program. So on Tuesdays, we'll do catch up again from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, as well as Tuesday. So that's four days, that's gonna be a little bit longer. You won't see a lot of graphics on the catch-up day programs because honestly those take a long, long time to do in the edit. And so we're gonna do Tuesday through Friday with the regular show, Saturday the special show with the Countess. We'll occasionally do different shows. We've got one planned for episode 100, which is coming up, uh, I think a week from tomorrow. So we're not saying goodbye, we're just saying a little bit less in terms of the days we're doing this. So, let's begin with our national days. So let's begin with July 10. It is Don't Step on a Bee Day. Probably always a good idea. I don't think we need a special day for that, do we? Pina Colada Day. Oh, I like pina coladas and walks in the rain and I'm not that big of a fan of my coat very much, but still, if you like a pina colada, have it today. Teddy Bear's Picnic Day. Okay. July 11, Cheer Up the Lonely Day. Oh, that's some good thing to do right now. A good thing. I'm not speaking very well this morning. A good thing to do right now. All American Pet Photo Day, and one of our pets uh, came to us four years ago today uh, to put up a picture of him. Kafka the cat, the clown, Havoc follows wherever Kafka goes. Free Slurpee Day was supposed to be July 11, but uh, that got canceled this year due to COVID-19. 7, 11, yeah, you get it. July 12, National Eat Your Jello Day. Jello, etch a sketch day, and pecan pie day. Ooh, that sounds good. Today, National French Fries Day, mm. Fool's Paradise Day. Mm. Seems like we're living in those times, doesn't it? And embrace your geekness day. We are a geek, so we're embracing our geekness today. Or is that a nerd? Not sure. Let's get into our San Francisco stories for today, the last three days. And as we so often do, we're relying on John Ralston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco. Hope you're tuning in, John. Your book has been such a, a wonderful resource for this blog. Couldn't do it without you. So we begin with uh, July 10, 1854, the opening of the bank of Lucas Turner and Company. And the president of that bank, 
William Tecumseh, William Tecumseh, there we go, Sherman, uh, famous for the Civil War, certainly, but had a military career before that, and then came to San Francisco. Sherman, during his hiatus in his military career, career was a San Francisco banker. Born in Ohio in 1820, he graduated from West Point in 1840 and came to California during the Mexican War. As the gold rush boosted California's economy, Sherman, at the instigation of fellow officer Henry Turner of St. Louis, resigned his commission in the military to become partner in a St. Louis banking firm whose San Francisco branch would be Lucas Turner and Company. Finding a lot at the northeast corner of Montgomery and Jackson, and we'll talk about why that lot was there in a moment, was I? Sherman constructed a three-story building designed partly by himself. Sherman had no banking experience, but that didn't matter, as most pioneer bankers hadn't either. Sherman wasn't happy personally in San Francisco. He suffered asthma. wasn't happy with being a banker either. Uh, his asthma was possibly aggravated by San Francisco's climate. Meticulous and honest, Sherman found San Francisco's anything-goes business climate not to his liking. And his wife, Ellen Ewing Sherman, felt isolated from her Ohio family. Finally, the cost of living was too high. Sound familiar? Lucas Turner and Company, he left, and Lucas Turner and Company would close at San Francisco Branch in 1857, and Sherman would relocate east but return to San Francisco in 1858 to oversee the liquidation of the firm's assets. So where he built that building, and that building is still there, it was a three-story building, uh, but the third story, I believe, was damaged in the earthquake of 1906, if I remember right. Yes. And uh, that site is where an adobe cottage stood at one time, owned by James Lick, which was my original business office. We have another connection with Sherman and the Bank of Lewis Turner and Company. They oversaw the liquidation of our assets most unfortunate bankruptcy. Go visit the building. There's a beautiful plaque on it. It's still there. It's a dental office now as well as some other offices as well in the Barbary Coast area at the corner of, uh, let's see, Jackson and Montgomery. It is the northeast corner. Gray building. Can't miss it. July 11, 1967. Bust the ballet stars. Around 3.30 a.m. during the Summer of Love, a world-famous Haight-Ashbury district, in the world-famous Haight-Ashbury district, police responded to complaints about a wild party at 42 Belvedere Street. When a patrolman appeared at the door, someone inside screamed, and there was a panicky rush out the back. Uh, the roof officers found numerous individuals, among them Rudolf Nureyev and Dame Margot Fontien, the most famous ballet stars in the world and principal dancers, of England's Royal Ballet. After a search turned up marijuana cigarettes, white capsules, and two pornographic films, but no projector. Nureyev and Fontian, along with 16 others, were arrested and charged with disorderly conduct and being in a house where marijuana was used. Uh, they put up $330 bail each, by the and that was posted by the Ballet manager, uh, Dame Margot at the Pursuit in St. Francis Salt said, I'm not talking to anyone. And uh, they were eventually, well, it doesn't say what happened here, but I think they're, I think they were convicted. I don't think they were sentenced too much. I have to look into that one some more. I thought it was in the book. Oh, well. July 12, 1946, waterfront labor unrest breaks out again. We talked about the strike of 1934 and Black Thursday. Uh, this was uh, a strike all along the waterfront. There was disagreements between the unions, but it lasted, um, started in August, no, started in July, went through August. Wage increases were then negotiated by the union, and the strike ended, uh, it lasted until November 23rd, actually, and it was the longest strike since 1937. July 13, 1898. The Ferry Building opens. The new building was designed by 34-year-old architect Arthur Page Brown. It replaced a wooden, rather ramshackle one. Uh, combined a 660-foot-long building with classical arches and Corinthian columns with a central tower, 
uh, modeled after the Giralda bell tower of the Seville Cathedral in Spain. The interior was an enormous nave lit by continuous skylights and electric lights. It was a triumph, but Brown never saw it. He'd been thrown from a horse in October 1895, just after his firm was awarded the contract and died the following January. San Francisco's ferry building was put to a severe test in the morning of April 18, 1906, when the earthquake and fire devastated the city. The tower's sandstone facade cracked and its four-faced clock stopped, but the building continued to function and was a departure point for nearly 200,000 persons fleeing the city. Ferry traffic grew after the city was rebuilt, and at one time the ferry building was the second busiest terminal in the world after London's Sharing Cross Station. Now, with the opening of the Upper Norton Bridge and the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, ferry service was phased out. The ferry building sat nearly vacant for decades. It was almost torn down. It had the indignity of having a freeway in front of it, the Embarcadero Freeway, which was eventually torn down. And the ferry building was turned into the ferry building marketplace. Uh, when things reopen, I strongly advise a visit. It's a gourmet paradise, and it is where our waterfront tour begins. And we'll be doing those again on the first and third Sunday of every month. So uh, the ferry building is a wonderful thing. Luckily, still with us, could easily have been destroyed. Our other histories for the week, starting with July 10th. U.S. begins construction of the Central Pacific Railroad. Of course, the railroad barons, I always, get, I always miss one, let's see. Leland Stanford, Charles Crocker, Mark Hopkins, and Collis Huntington built that railroad, the Transcontinental Railroad, and they all made their fortunes doing that in both beautiful mansions, on Knob Hill, which all burned down in the 1906 earthquake. And now we have hotels named after them, like the Stanford Court, the Huntington, the Mark Hopkins. Uh, not one for Crocker, though, because his widow gave the land to the Episcopal Church, and that's where gave Grace Cathedral stands today. And we'll do a whole episode on Crocker at some point. And his famous spike fence, if you don't want to wait, look that up. The Crocker spike fence is quite a story. And which reminds me, I don't know if I have uh, given a plug to the podcast series Sparkle Tech, Sparkle, S P A R K L E T A C K dot com. A real inspiration for what we're doing. Richard Miller created 66 wonderful episodes about San Francisco history, and uh, he's got a whole one about the spike fence, a wonderful one about me. Uh, check out the series, he doesn't do it anymore. But he left behind a wonderful legacy. And Richard, if you are tuning in, hats off to you. Great, great series. Let's move on. 1866, the indelible pencil patented by Edson P. Clark in Northampton, Massachusetts on this day. 1873, French poet Paul Verlaine woos Arthur Rimbaud with a pistol. 1917, Emma Goldman is in prison for obstructing the draft. 1925, Mayor Baba begins his silence of 44 years. His followers still observe Silence Day on this date, that day, in commemoration. I wish I knew it was incredible. 1942, Heinrich Himmler orders the sterilization of all Jewish women in Ravensbrück camp. 1962, Martin Luther King is arrested during a demonstration in Georgia. Also 1962, Telstar, the first geosynchronous communication satellite, is launched. We'll come back to Telstar in a moment. 1973, John Paul Getty III, grandson of oil tycoon J. Paul Getty, is kidnapped in Rome by Italian gangsters wanting a ransom. They come up as a real 1985, Coca-Cola announces it will resume selling old formula Coke, Coca-Cola Classic. Moving on to July 11, 1663, Oxford mathematician John Wallace gives a lecture on Euclid's parallel postulate, first Western attempt to derive parallel postulate as a theorem. I have no idea what any of that means. Maybe you do. 
hope you do, answer in the comments down below. 1804, Vice President of the United States, Aaron Burr mortally woos former Secretary of the Ter Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, in a pistol duel. 1892, the U.S. Patent, Office's Patent Office says Joseph Swan, rather than Thomas Edison, invented the electric light carbon for the incandescent lamp. 1893, the first cultured pearl is attained, obtained by Kokichi, Kokichi, pardon me, Kokichi Wikimoto. 1922, the Hollywood Bowl opens. 1960, the book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee is first published. 1962 as well, the day after its launch, the first Atlantic TV transmission via Telstar. 1969, David Bowie releases the single Space Oddity nine days before Apollo 11 lands on the moon. His first hit, I believe. Pretty sure about that. And 2019, the last Volkswagen Beetle is produced in Pueblo, Mexico, ending production worldwide after 80 years. A very successful car. Moving on to July 12th, 1934, the U.S. disciplinary barracks on Alcatraz Island is abandoned. That's when it became a federal penitentiary. 1951, mob tries to keep black family from moving into all-white Cicero, Illinois. 1954, President Eisenhower puts forward a plan for an interstate highway system. See, we can do big projects. 1962 is the Rolling Stones' first performance at the Marquee Club in London. They're still performing. What is that? That's how many years later? Let's see. 1962, 38 plus 20, 58 years ago. Whoa. 1982, FEMA promises survivors of nuclear war will get their mail. Isn't that good news? In 1984, Geraldine Ferraro becomes the first female U.S. major party vice presidential candidate and if memory serves correct, that uh, convention was held at the spanking new Moscone Center here in San Francisco. Uh, moving on to July 13, 1837, Queen Victoria is the first monarch to live in Buckingham Palace, the present day. 1865, P.T. Barnum's Museum burns down in New York. 1865 as well, Horace Greeley, founder and editor of the New York Times, reputedly advises his readers to go west, young man. Uh, that was a phrase picked up by both the village people and the pet shop boys. We'll come back to the pet shop boys. 1871, the world's first championship cat show is uh, organized by Harrison Weir and held in London's Crystal Palace. Boy, there's a building I'd like to go back to see. Maybe I'll have to warm up the time machine and do that. 1923, the Hollywood sign is officially dedicated in the hills above Hollywood in Los Angeles. It originally reads Hollywood Land after the Hollywood Land development uh, tract of homes. And it was a publicity sign for that. But the la four last letters are dropped after renovation in 1949. 1930, David Sarnoff reports in New York Times that TV would be theater in every home. I don't think so. No, I'm just kidding. What would we do without television? Especially these days. 1939, Frank Sinatra makes his recording debut. 1960, the U.S. Democratic Convention nominates JFK as a presidential candidate in Los Angeles. In the Imperial Collection, we have a parking permit from that convention. It was held at the L.A. Sports Arena. I wonder if that building's still there. I think it is. I'm not sure. And 2013, Black Lives Matter is created in response to the acquittal of George Zimmerman, on trial for the murder of Trayvon Martin. Black Lives Matter. Our births for today, well, not for today, July 10. July 10. We shall learn to speak one day. Adolphus Bush, German born American brewer, Anheuser Busch. Uh, birthday July 10th as well, Nicholas Tesla, until his birthday was stolen by Thomas Edison. 
1871, Marcel, Pro Marcel Proust, French intellectual and novelist. 1882. I'm missing something here. I got my pages mixed up. Pardon me for a moment. We need a secretary. I am a hog was born. Uh, American society leader, Texas art patron, and founder of the Houston Symphony. Not kidding on that. Uh, 1920, uh, David Brinkley, the famous newscaster. 1921, Harvey Ball, American inventor and designer of the popular smiley graphic. 1922, fighter Jake LaMotta. 1926, Fred Gwynn, car 54, where are you? The Munsters. 1933, Jerry Herman, the writer of Hello Dolly, Maine, uh, Kaja Fall, just to name some of his great musicals, had the privilege of meeting him once. <clears throat> 1939, singer Mavis Staples. 1945, actor Ron Glass, Barney Miller, a wonderful series that was too good for television, Frank's Place. 1947, Arlo Guthrie, you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. 1954, Pet Shop Boys, Neil Tennant. Uh, I know everybody remembers West End Girls, but they are still going and creating great music this late into their careers. Check them out. And 1980, Jessica Simpson. Moving on to July 11th, 1767, John Quincy Adams, sixth president of the United States. 1899, E.B. White, American writer, Charlotte's Web, Stuart Little, Little, and the Elements of Style. 1906, we talked about him last week, Harry Von Zell, announcer, uh, was on the Burns and Allen show, but what I forgot to say last week, he was, he was also the spokesperson for Home Savings. Uh, in California, I believe only, bank uh, that no longer exists. Savings is a long one, actually. Uh, 1915, Magda Gabor, the least known of the Gabor sisters. 1920, Yule Brenner, 1931, we talked about him last week as well. Tab Hunter, 1934, Giorgio Armani. You know, I've always wanted to go to an Armani exchange, but I have them on mine to exchange. I think that's how it works. And 1959, Suzanne Vega. Moving on to July 12, 1730, Josiah Wedgwood, English pottery designer and manufacturer of Wedgwood pottery. 1817, Henry David Thoreau, Walden. 1854, George Eastman, American inventor, the Kodak camera, founder of the Eastman Kodak Company. 1864, George Washington Carver, the great uh, agricultural scientist. 1884 as well, Louis B. Mayer, Metro Golden Mayor. 1884, uh, Amadeo Modigliani. 1895, Oscar Hammerstein II, not the first, the second. The first was a, a, a talent agent, producer, but the second wrote many, 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 many musicals. Bummer! Keep it down. 1895, architect R. Buckminster Fuller. 1909, Three Stooges, Curly Joe Dorita. 1917, artist Andrew Wayeth. 1937, Bill Cosby. 1943, Christy McVie. 1948, Richard Simmons. Everybody exercise. Uh, 1978, Topher Grace, known primarily for this past 70s show, but. Uh, also for uh, numerous other roles that he's played. And we left out the date. Well, happy birthday, Malala Yousafzai. Uh, left out the date, why did I do that? July 13, Julius Caesar. 1864, oh, that was, uh, sorry, 100 BC. I thought it was just yesterday. 1864, John Jacob Astor IV, American businessman and soldier, Richest passenger aboard the Titanic, where he died. 1928, actor Bob Crane. 1940, Patrick Stewart, make it so. We'll come back to him. 1940 as well, uh, Chef Paul Perdon. 
1942, Harrison Ford. 1944, Enro Rubik, inventor of the Rubik's Cube. Never could figure those things out. 1946, Richard Cheech Marin. Hey man, it's me, Dave, let me in. Dave's not here, man. No, no, it's me, Dave. Happy birthday, Cheech. And 2305, Jean-Luc Picard, the fictional captain on Star Trek The Next Generation. He had the same birthday as the actor who played him, Patrick Stewart. Our deaths, July 10th, 1851, Louis-Jacques Degueret, Degueret, I can't pronounce that. He was the French inventor and photographer, the Degueret type. 1941, Ferdinand Jelly Roll, Morton. 1979, Arthur Fiedler, the conductor of the Boston Pops. 1989, Mel Blanc, the man of a thousand voices. Now, just a little bit about him. You know, he did all those uh, voices for the Warner Brothers cartoons, Barney Rubble, oh, more than you could even imagine. His son could do a lot of his voices, uh, but couldn't act. It's taken, I don't know how many actors to replace Mel Blanc. And I can only do a couple of the voices. Um, D uh, Daffy Duck. You are despicable. Or was that Sylvester? Fluffer and fuck attack. A little bit of difference, but they were similar voices. Enough of that. 2008, Hiroaki Aoki. Hiro Aoki Aoki. Aoki Aoki. Founder of Benny Hanna. 2015 actor and bridge expert Omar Sharif. 1937, George Gershwin. One of the greatest composers of the 20th century. Uh, you know, Rhapsody in Blue is now uh, copyright free. That just happened this year. He was only 38 years old when he died. 1987, Thomas F. Waddell, Dr. Tom Waddell, founder of, at the time called the Gay Olympics, but the International Olympic Committee sued, and now it's called the Gay Games. Now, what's interesting about that is they didn't want the word Olympics associated with something gay. And, but there's the Special Olympics, the Dog Olympics. They didn't sue any of those, only the Gay Olympics. Remember that. Yes, prejudice still exists. 1989, actor Sir Lawrence Olivier. 2007, former First Lady Lady Bird Johnson. Is there a better way to say that? 2014, Tommy Ramone. Big Ramone's fan. Hey, oh, let's go. Enough of that. Uh, July 12th, former United States Secretary of Treasury Alexander Hamilton dies after being shot by Aaron Burr in a pistol duel. 1849, former First Lady Dolly Madison, the fourth First Lady. Yeah, okay. Uh, 1973, Lon Chaney Jr. 1979, Minnie Riperton. 2011, Sherwood Schwartz, creator of Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch. 2018, Tom Gallagher, American diplomat, gay activist, first Foreign Service officer to publicly come out in 1976. Moving on to July 13, 1105, Rachi, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzaki, Jewish intellectual, very influential. 1973, <laughs> dyslexia, dyslexia kicked in. 1793, Jean-Paul Marat, French journalist and revolutionary, is murdered by Charlotte Corday in his bath at the age of 50. 1946, photographer Arthur Stieglitz. 1954, one of my favorite artists, Frida Kahlo, passed away. 1970, Leslie Groves, American Army engineer who directed the Manhattan Project and the construction of the Pentagon. 2006, actor Red Buttons. And 2010, George Steinbrenner, uh, who, as you know, was on Seinfeld. Well, it wasn't him on Seinfeld. It was Larry David always telling George, go, go get me a calzone, Georgie. Go get a calzone. Well, enough of bad imitations and singing and flubs and typos. 
that wraps it up for the 30 minute edition. Wow. Of today's uh, history vlog. Don't forget, after this week, we'll be on a Tuesday through Saturday schedule. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, stay healthy. If you go outside, wear a damn mask. We are so disappointed every day to see all the people out there not wearing masks and coming up with all sorts of insane reasons. If you're not wearing a mask, you're responsible for death. You are a murderer. It's that simple. Be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.